Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and we're back today just strolling around the yard talking about things to come. One of which is Ruby, which I'm working on today because she had a massive oil leak. So I'm going to be straightening that thing out. I've also got a little discussion as to uh, what's coming up. Uh, no sooner I released a hurricane video back on Monday, we're already about to get hit by, well, technically it's one more, but one ran through the path of the other one, so it kind of picked up some of its moisture and, well, the kind of the dampness that we're seeing today is an offshoot of that. So we'll see what happens, but we're going to discuss it a little more anyway. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And if you want to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it. And we'll be back right after the intro. Well, we may get to see B today, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll just have to see how that works out. But right now I'm working on Ruby. If you look down inside the bell housing here, you'll see there's a massive puddle of oil. I think the uh, main seal, or the flywheel seal, is uh, just kind of gone to shit. Uh, the flywheel that was on here, I ran my finger around the uh, ceiling uh, lip where the seal would normally rub onto, and it, it wasn't perfectly flat it was kind of wavy it wasn't sharp by any means I mean it didn't seem like it had any problems but I think um, it's just not getting an adequate enough seal and it actually didn't start leaking until just recently so I think it probably just beat on the seal repeatedly and uh, after several months it finally let go but this is the third seal I've replaced on this thing in the last six years so I'm thinking that flywheel is probably the culprit I'm going to be replacing that flywheel today I'm actually waiting for one to arrive and uh, then of course I'll take the next steps from there um, Otherwise, I do have a seal waiting inside, but I just pulled the engine out. I'm trying to get this stuff done before it rains today. And as you can see from the sky, it's dreary. Some stuff back here is a little bit wet because things have already started to rain. Oh uh, yeah, wow, nice and oily. <laughs> I'm going to have to degrease the pressure plate, probably even the clutch. Uh, this thing was probably sitting in a bath of oil because I bet you the bell housing would uh, kind of fill up. Not that it's sealed. It does leak out the bottom, but I bet you it was... Uh, holding a pretty good puddle and of course the flywheel was slinging it everywhere my clutch always grabbed pretty good though I didn't have a problem with that but it's also a uh, upgraded metallic clutch and it's a stage one pressure plate so whatever difference that made it uh, certainly caused it not to slip you know, let's get this taken apart well I got the old seal out here and it really doesn't look like anything is wrong with it except I put a little nick in it when I was trying to pull it out um, I don't know if this was sealing properly, so it's actually just not going to go back in anyway. It's already been messed up, so I've got a new one. In fact, I have two new ones. One of them is Mexican. You can see right there, it says Mexico. And the other one is a German one, it says Germany. Now, when I look inside of the German one, you can see there's a little spring inside of there. This guy right here. The Mexican one, for some reason, doesn't have that. I don't know if it was made that way or if it uh, got lost. I don't even know where these seals came from. It probably came to me in one of my um, garage purchases where I cleared out somebody's shop. But this little tip here comes to me from VW Jawbreaker. And if you're not subscribed to Gary over at VW Jawbreaker, you should be. But this little spring here, you can find the gap and you can separate it just like so. And then what Gary does is he cuts off a little section of this here and he uses better cutters than I'm using with that cut off we should be able to thread this back together and I did there it is and what that does is shortens up the spring a little bit and it will keep a slightly tighter tension on the inside of the seal here against the flywheel so it'll hold it together. And speaking of the flywheel, remember I said it was kind of a wavy edge? <laughs> I don't know what happened to this thing, but it is worse than I remembered. Look at that. See that? It's all bumpy and nasty. It looks like it, looks like it was rusted at some point. I don't know what the hell happened to this, but that whole ceiling surface along here is, is gone. So this is definitely a problem. Whether or not it did any damage to the seal, I don't know, but it was definitely not sealing properly, probably for a very, very long time. So this is not going back on. And the clutch disc, wherever the hell I put it, it's uh, 
really greasy and gummy. So we're gonna spray this down with brake parts cleaner and uh, get it cleaned up, as well as the pressure plate here, which is also all gummy. And then the new flywheel, I will resurface. What I do with the inside of these, boy, that's really nasty and gummy. Usually what I do is I get in here and I sandblast the inside of it. And you say, well, why do you sandblast it? Well, it makes a nice rough surface. And that rough surface lets your clutch grip really nicely. So that's what I'll be doing to the new flywheel. Anyway, in between videos, my phone beeped and it said my flywheel was in my mailbox. So I'm gonna run and grab that right now and we'll be back in just a little while. There's another hurricane coming up. This is a hurricane, uh, which one is it? Uh, Delta. Hurricane Delta, because we've run out of names. And this sucker's coming through here and it's predicted to be a Cat 4 sometime soon. I don't know if it'll be a Cat 4 by the time it gets here, but this is all the damage that Sally did to my yard. And there's a few things I didn't get to talk about in the last video and people uh, pointed out. They said, uh, your fence appears to be racked. And that is correct, if you notice, it's uh, no longer parallel to the, uh, or perpendicular to the earth rather. The whole fence is, is racked. And that's true because the tree that fell it hit the back fence in the corner on his side and pulled the entire fence, the whole length of it, that way at the top. It just it, it just leaned it right over you. You see the gap that opened up over here? And it pulled the nails out. I mean, yeah, the entire fence is just, uh, it's crooked. <laughs> it's very crooked. It never used to be quite so bad. See all the way over to here where the uh, tree started to grow around the fence a little bit, it pulled it out. So the entire fence is racked in that direction from all the way in the back there from where that tree hit. I promised you guys in the video I was going to show you that tree. I never did actually get a walk over there to uh, show you a little video footage of it. And yes, that dog barks constantly. But let me show you what's going on over here. I'm kind of one-handed. I'm a big body, so it's a little hard for me to get in here. But there it is. That tree is absolutely massive. You can see my second, uh, rather my fourth tree, this is the one that got uh, just destroyed. There it is. It got wrapped up into the tree that fell and uh, went down that way. This is a branch from my tree. And see if I can step up here onto this. <laughs> a little hard for me to do without dying, but that tree is just absolutely enormous. And it fell right between their houses, just destroyed the fence, and it went all the way up into their front yards. So this thing is big really big and you guys can't see the base of it but it goes back that way underneath all the uh, the debris these branches are actually from my trees that that thing had taken out but this thing was probably a good 36 inches uh, across the bottom good three feet wide it's about two foot over here all right well, let me climb back over boy it just destroyed this fence bad really bad well anyway as per Florida law if God puts it over your fence, it's your responsibility. So uh, the insurance of these people will be the ones that have to take care of this tree and not my neighbor and not me because, well, as I said, God put it there. We got Barky over here. Let me step on down from here and see if I can do this without killing myself. Yeah. <laughs> A lot easier to do with two hands, I'll tell you what. This is uh, Skeeter's old uh, kennel. I used to have her out in the yard during the day when I'd go to work before she used to join me every day. I actually need to eliminate this. It's uh, just falling apart. Surprised it hasn't rusted, but it's just crushed. I think somebody one day stepped over the fence to take a shortcut through the uh, yards rather than walking around the block and crushed it. But anyway, I could probably fix it well, yada yada, but I just don't want to. All right, well, getting back on this, I repotted my plants. They were starting to become very successful, growing all kinds of wonderful peppers when the storm decided to flip over my pepper plants. These are kind of special to me because they're about a year old now. And at the time that I was planting them, Skeeter was still around and uh, she was hanging out with me when, uh, when I did all this. So as I said, kind of important. A little butterfly just landed on there and it's gone. <laughs> but uh, I pulled little trays off the bottom because they were, they were retaining too much water. This, the funny thing is, they were, they were sealing around the bottom of the container rather than allowing it to drip. Probably a defect, but I think that they were just too heavy. They were pressing down too tightly on it. Anyway, yeah, they looked like shit, but they were pretty well beaten up by the uh, storm having flipped them over. And then, of course, me replanting them hasn't been the best thing for them. 
They were getting really yellow there for a little while too, but I fertilized them and uh, they're starting to get darker again. The green is starting to darken out a whole lot more than it was. They'll probably be okay. They're never going to be pretty again. <laughs> but the goal was just to, uh, to get some peppers. I don't think these things will last more than a year anyway, so they're kind of pushing, pushing their usefulness at this point. Anyway, enough about the peppers. Let's talk about the yellow gear. The yellow gear withstood the storm just fine. Absolutely no damage at all to speak of. But one of the more interesting things is the tarp that you see on here. I had four blocks of wood holding it down. I usually leave a, a broom handle or a shovel handle or something leaning on the side to stop the uh, wind from lifting this up and raining it sideways. Well, all these blocks and everything were exactly where I left them, but the tarp was gone. I found it crumpled up in the corner of the yard. So just like somebody pulling a tablecloth out with all the dishes still on it, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> it's just absolutely unbelievable. The wooden blocks were just where I left them. Even the one that's way up there on top of the roof like that. It was sitting there just like that. Anyway, uh, the only thing to speak of is this thing became a swimming pool. I didn't record any video of that, but I drilled a couple holes in the floor and uh, just let it drain out from the low spots. Right now, uh, B and I are ordering up some brake parts for this car. We're going to put some brand new four-wheel disc brakes on there. I'm sorry about that dog barking absolutely uh, without rest. I think it's just... It's always been a problem. I recorded a video about that almost 10 years ago, and it still hasn't gotten any better. And I know you guys are giving me all kinds of suggestions, but uh, none of them were, were good enough suggestions. I, I Yeah, I can't deal with any of them. So anyway, brakes on this thing. We're going to get a brand new uh, set of four smoothie wheels, some hubcaps, nice stainless steel ones for a stock uh, early look, and I think we're going at white walls. Of course, B will discuss what she's doing beyond that, but those are things that are coming up there. Now let's talk about Gregory. This is the one that people ask the most questions about. Let's see what's going on. All right, so there's Gregory. Gregory survived the storm sitting exactly where he's at. Of course, he lost his garage tent. Uh, damage includes a lot of flash rusting. That's really the only thing to speak of. Everything just got flash rusted, anything that was bare metal. This has kind of a um, silver metal, metal coating. I don't know what it's called. I think it's some kind of a weld-through primer. Uh, maybe it contains zinc or something like that, but along the edges it did start to rust, so that'll need some phosphoric acid treatment. All these window pieces here, these got it the worst. These had almost no rust on them at all, maybe just a dot here and there, and they flash rusted up pretty bad, so I need to soak those in some phosphoric acid. And uh, after that, once they're clean, get them back in the house. I think I need to store them inside from here forward until I get attached to the bus permanently. I'm not ready to attach them yet because I don't know what the spacing is going to be. When I figure out what I'm doing with the roof and how that's going to work, then I'll figure out where the window spacing is going to be and go from there. Um, some of the pieces, like those back here, didn't see as much rain. It didn't get quite as much rust. Not that this tarp was covering anything, because it wasn't. If I had known the storm was coming, I probably would have pulled tarps over both the bus and Ruby inside of the tent to try to keep them dry. But, well, I wasn't here for it. I was out of town. And it's just, you know, you do with what you got. Dad's motorcycle came back with me, and uh, that endured the storm as I had to leave it here between trips. I had no time to bring it into the garage or get it tied up. Um, no time to bring it in the garage or get it safe, so I simply just tied tarps around and got it covered. But currently it shares a tarp with Gregory until I can get uh, the bike in the garage. I do plan on... Um, Possibly putting this thing in some shows, cleaning it up again and putting it in there. It's just, it's such a cool bike, and Dad appreciated it so much, but he didn't have that opportunity to ride it as much as he wanted to. What I didn't realize is he broke his leg some time ago, and uh, it happened while he was riding his motor scooter. Um, one of the um, swing axle bolts just snapped on it, but that's cheap Chinese crap for you. And uh, when it dumped him, it broke his leg, and it didn't occur to me it was quite as bad as it was, because after that he had a fear of bikes. He still got on it, rode around the neighborhood once in a while, absolutely loved it, but he was terrified of going out on the main road. He figured he was just, he was too old. And, well, that probably was a, a right decision, I think. Anyway, so, nonetheless, the bike has come home with me. Uh, the title is currently going through probate, so it'll be a little while before I can put it up on the street anyway. But in time, we'll get there, and uh, meanwhile, it sits here. It will be a showpiece in my shop just the same. I'll probably have it up on some kind of a table or a stage or something so everybody can get a good look at it. So that way when it's not being ridden, um, you can really see it. And I'm going to polish everything down and make it all look really nice. 
it's a great operable bike it's going to be enjoyed and it's going to be well looked at <laughs> also down in there the bottom half of this headlight bucket you probably remember was a helium tank and uh, that flash rusted just the same so yeah that that that's a problem this thing i can't see anything changed on it it doesn't appear that anything happened to the blue beetle here whatsoever um Except for maybe the black back tire went flat, but that's not really the fault of uh, the storm. I don't know if it went flat or if it just sunk. <laughs> if it sunk, it was probably the storm. It made the ground a little marshy. But there is a branch up above it. You can see where it broke, right up there. So it's just kind of dangling. Um, I'm going to probably take that tree down. And this car is otherwise, otherwise safe at the moment. The lawnmower, of course, is tarp covered. I had no room to put it in the tent garage is where I would usually put it because I was so full of crap in here at the time. Doodle Bastard got tossed around. I got it covered up over there right now because I wanted to work on that first. I wanted to have it at our car show, uh, which is coming up in two weeks. I don't know that it's going to happen. It just, it, it needs more than I can get into. The storm kind of you know, fucked it up. Threw it around, flattened the tires, and knocked the tire off the beat. I don't think I had enough air in it. It's probably why it happened. But I think when it was in the tent garage over here, it got picked up and just thrown around it's just everything on it is coming apart stuff is just falling off of the bike and it was never like that before so it wasn't intended for that kind of beating yes i've got some old computers here these are scrap metal also panels uh for gregory because this stuff is some really really thick steel good for these types of things also there's a lot of parts in there that i'm going to get recycled and i should be able to make me uh some money for well a couple of nice lunches out I like lunch money. <laughs> Whenever I do something like that, that's what it becomes. It becomes lunch money. So, uh, well, that's uh, what's going on here. All right, here is my new flywheel. Looks like it's pretty well sealed up. There we go. Nice, beautiful chromoly well lubricated to prevent it from corrosion flywheel this is a lightened flywheel i think it only weighs about uh 12 pounds or something like that anyway we're going to sandblast the inside over here to give it a nice surface for um optimal clutch grippage although it feels no it's just a machine groove never mind it goes in a circle not yeah all right we're going to hit it anyway we'll be back in just a minute and don't forget your rubber gogi. This is just something that I wanted to include because this is oh, the seal that everybody always forgets. But this one lives up inside the flywheel here. That was one I just had to show. Make sure you get it nice and oiled before you put it in. That will help to um, not only to seal, but when you assemble everything, it stops the parts from damaging the seal so that way they slide in gingerly versus tearing pieces off anyway that's good um the seal is already in the engine this is ready to go on all right that should tighten it up i guess it's ready to go <laughs> just kidding guys this is the tool we're going to use to torque it down this little guy does a good job of getting the nut tight however all right well, you guys have seen me torque this down before. I forget what the torque spec is on this thing. It's like uh, like 300 foot-pounds, I think, is what I tighten it down to. But this tool is wonderful because you don't have to put that much torque on it, and it gets the job done. All right, we'll finish that up, and we'll start assembling the clutch. Technically, with these, you don't need the flywheel stop if you turn it into itself. So we're going to torque it down to roughly 35 foot-pounds on this tool, but the torque multiplier will push that to just over 300. That's it. There it is. That gets it. I resurfaced the pressure plate also in the sand blaster. That's ready to be bolted back on. Everything's been degreased, cleaned, and it's ready for action. Unless I can get the bulbs threaded. Come on, thread in, you bastard. There you go. I'm not using this tool to put the final torque on it. I 
and we'll be doing that with an appropriate torque wrench. And out comes the pilot tool. All right, the engine is uh, ready to go back in. All right, we've got everything together. It looks like it should start. The only thing I didn't put in was the rubber boot. This thing is just a pain in the ass to put in, and I like to make sure that everything is ready and operational before that goes back in. And no, I'm not somebody that forgets it. Anyways, um, let's fire it up and see what happens. Definitely cold, needs to warm up a bit, but uh, just as always, she fired right up. One of the first things I noticed is the vibration of the engine feels a little bit different. So, uh, the other flywheel probably had uh, oil and, and clutch debris and dirt and things just wadded up around the edges of the flywheel, which is going to run a little bit out of balance. But uh, hey, the sun is shining as we're getting things done here. This is good. I can't believe it came out at all with a hurricane on the way. and. Um, well, we'll check the oil leaks. Let's see what's doing underneath the car. I found a little tiny fuel leak over here. The fuel line's a little bit wet, so I'm gonna try to tighten up that clamp there on the bottom. That was the last one that I removed and put back together, so chances are that's where the problem is. So uh, I'll straighten that out and uh, put that boot on, as I said, and then I think we're gonna be good to go. So in the best interest of not being clickbaity, <laughs> God forbid somebody should accuse me of it again, misusing the term. <laughs> I promised you guys cockatiels up in the title of this video, so uh, here they are. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like they're not going to make a whole lot of noise right now. That's Chico. And this one, I don't know what her name is. And I don't even know how old she is. She's a little droopy like Skeeter, so uh, I'm assuming she's probably of age. But Chico's been around a long time. Uh, these are part of my inheritance from Dad. Some people offered to take them, but they're part of the family, so I, I couldn't leave them behind. Nonetheless, I've got two cockatiels now. And you notice you don't hear Boomer in the background. That's because I threw his ass out in the pool. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.